Hello and welcome to this pre-concert talk for the world premiere of Jonathan Whiting's song cycle, Seasons. I'm joined by the composer, Johnny, and our wonderful uh, host for this interview, Scarlett Clemo. Over to you, Scarlett. Great, okay, so um, the first question I wanted to ask both of you was how did you choose the text for the cycle? So, I think the original idea from the cycle, for the cycle came from sort of my my love of romance languages and um, from that I thought, wouldn't it be really cool to sort of combine languages within the song cycle? I pitched this to Johnny and we both agreed that it was it would be something a bit different. So I don't really know of any song cycles that do that. So that was the initial thought. So I thought I want one text in French, Italian, Spanish and Romanian, sort of four romance languages spanning different parts of Europe. Um, and so then looking for you know, poems to do the seasons, I, I quite enjoyed looking at particularly poems that didn't necessarily do what you expected um, with sort of our preconceived ideas of the seasons. So this particularly with uh, summer uh, or var in Romanian um, and autumn, the Spanish otoño, um, the, the summer one you can I feel like you can tackle summer in two ways in literature. You can either think of it with the sort of beach parties, Ibiza style, like seshing, um, which hopefully will be back soon, um, <laughs> or um, or you can do what uh, uh, Toporciano does um, and um, go for a more sort of hazy, calm, sort of warm summer. Um, it's, I, I like this text because it almost reminds me of the Cambridge summer. There's a wonderful line in it of um, uh, Un vitzel in rio sadapa, um, which is a, a, a calf uh, is down by the river drinking. And I just think that, that that conjures for me up memories of Midsummer Common or Branchester and hunting and all that sort of loveliness. Um, so I wanted to sort of get these differing views of the seasons and then autumn, which you'd expect to be a bit sort of calmer still, you know, everything's slowing down before winter. But actually, um, Benedetti, the poet, um, is choosing to say, look, let's appreciate autumn, let's go full on and party and have fun, because winter's coming and it's gonna, like, make us sad and, you know, be slow and sad, so let's have fun in autumn. So I think that I had, I had fun sort of finding these different views of the seasons. Do you think that that is kind of a feature of In terms of the culture as well, I mean, you think about Romanian summer. I mean, I, I haven't been to Romania, but I I'm imagining based on my based on like Italian summers, which are very balmy, this sort of thing, as compared to say Spain, where there's like you know this culture of Ibiza and things like that. Yeah. So I think I think there is definitely something to be said for that. Um, and also, as you say, like within the language, you know, Spanish has. Um, just sort of more fun continents to play around with. I feel like you can get more, have more fun with words yeah. than, than in, say, um, uh, Romanian or, or Italian, which are more focused on the vowels. Mm. Yeah, definitely. Um, Johnny, had you written in other languages before? And was it was it different composing and setting a lot of different languages? I haven't, not to, the, not, to the, not to this extent. Yeah. Mostly I've been doing English, mostly specifically with like musical theatre, works for the theatre. Um, the reason I enjoyed this, writing this cycle particularly, was the challenges that those, uh, those languages brought when it came to setting them. Having to constantly message Richard saying, uh, where's the stress on this word, where's this word, oh no, actually that's just two syllables, and I was like, oh, okay, changing it. Um, I mean, that's part of the excitement of working on this you know, with Richard. Um, and it's just sort of, it also, also each language has its own sort of character to it. It adds to the, it, not only just from the text, but from the, the language itself. Um, and each piece I wanted to bring out, for just more than just the setting of the, the poem, each is almost its own narrative that's sort of in the poem, but also sort of amplified by the music as well. Yeah, no, I think that's really interesting. Do you feel like it was more of a collaborative process than maybe other? other songs that you've written have been because you kind of knew it was for Richard and he had this kind of interest in those languages. Oh yeah, because I, I 
plan, I wanted something, I wanted a song cycle and I went to Richard and said I want to do something like this, what, what sort of text are you thinking? So from the, from the beginning it was what text are you interested in, what do you think would make a good cycle? And working with performers and singers on when you're writing music makes it so much more exciting. It's better than when you're stuck at home writing, you know, listening to Sibelius sing your music at you. <laughs> Um, it's not going to give you much uh, criticism, yeah. <laughs> but it was great, you know, that's the best bit, is writing with real people. Yeah. I mean, suppose if you have a favourite song or a favourite text that you kind of really enjoy singing or that you really loved composing or you're really happy with. I think, personally, my favourite is probably Spring, mm. mostly from it. I was, I, I tried to go, because it's very sort of excited, I sort of had saw the characters quite an excitable, so, oh look at this, it's spring, it's spring. Um, and so there's, I sort of, the way I sort of bring out was this sort of rhythm, rhythmic sort of, uh, sort of uh, in, with uh, semi quavers there's, there's this rhythm where it's three lots of two and then two lots of three, and sort of keeps the sort of lilting sort of, sort of energy throughout the, throughout the um, piece. I think for me, I my favourite is the is the winter one. It's it's very slow, and the the poem itself is perhaps the most surrealist. It's by Apollinaire, who actually coined the term surrealism for Eric Satie's music. Um, and I kind of get very Satie vibes from it as yeah. well, um, with this very sort of high set piano part and um, uh, the opening that Les Anges dans le ciel, the angels in the sky. Um, but it's very very surreal. It's thinking of uh, snow with goose's feathers, and um, then you know finishes quite quite close with um you know I don't have my beloved in my arms anymore. So having just had this, oh let's look forward to, let's enjoy autumn because winter's gonna be sad. Winter is then sad. And I really like sort of the contrast going from autumn to winter. Yeah, no, that sounds really really lovely. Um, and do you think it's kind of it's different when a song cycle's been written for you specifically to perform it? feel like it's kind of different somehow or that you want to sort of do it differently? It feels more me, yeah. I have to say. I feel like I'm not singing it thinking, oh, I might not be doing exactly what Schubert or Grieg or whoever, whoever other composer I'm singing, I might not be doing exactly what they intended. Um, you know, there's, there's so many connotations and like things you have to factor in when you're singing you know if you're singing a bit of Schubert you don't just have to factor in the text you also have to factor in what was Schubert going through at his mm. during his life when you're singing that piece here you know having collaborated with Johnny throughout this process like I, I am the person that sets that it's it's my decision and I, I really enjoy that um, so like there's bits um, language so I, th I think it's it's very me I can act how I want to and sing how I want to. Yeah it sounds quite liberating and like you don't have that kind of pressure of you know 50 different performers yeah. behind you that you kind of feel like you have to do something different to all of them whatever you do is going to be exactly unique. yeah yeah um, well I suppose I think that completes our, our chat um, and we hope everyone enjoys the premiere of Seasons by Johnny
Thank you. 